You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is the Mind Health Coach with your host, Leah Marie. Change your mind, change your life. Your life is your choice, and you don't have to walk that path alone. Let Leah help you explore healing, inner peace, self love, and bring joy and wellness into your life. So now, please welcome the host of the Mind Health Coach, Leah Marie. Welcome to the Mind Health Coach Program. I'm Leah Marie, your host, and you're listening to a live broadcast here at the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. The Mind Health Coach Program is aired every Monday night from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to tune into this show on Mondays at 6 p.m. if you want to improve your life. To learn more about me and the programs that I offer, visit mindhealthcoach.com. And you can also learn more about my other programs, such as Eight Weeks to a Better Brain using Mooditations Daily Meditation Program at Mooditations.com. And tonight I want to address um, stress. And, you know, that's kind of an area that I speak about a lot. Uh, Stress is a big part of our lives. There can be good stress and bad stress. Um, You know, there's a lot of episodes in our lives that bring us wonderful things, and it also brings along stress. And um, that can be anything from, you know, getting engaged to getting married to buying a new house to getting a new job. All of these things can uh, create a sense of stress and bring that energy in, and it's called eustress. And uh, that is something that, you know, it, it's great and it, there's lots of wonderful things happening, but it, it kind of affects our body, bodies and our, um, you know, our systems in a similar way to stress that's not so great uh, that brings to our bodies. The, the difference is that with the positive things that happen, um, we actually don't experience the negative um, effects as much because there's some positive endorphins coming in to help balance the stress effects. Um, now, when you have stress that is negative, such as divorce or losing your house or losing your job or, you know, just um, illness, these are all things that are pretty difficult and, uh, you know, they, they cause a lot of stress. And so sometimes that can happen and, you know, we've got to learn how to manage our perspectives on things because if we don't, we could end up with dis-ease from all of the stress. And so it's important that even though circumstances are happening, both good and bad, and as I said, you have the, the helpful endorphins that level things out with the good because of all the joy that's going on. But with the bad, you don't, you know, it's kind of like you got to create your own good out of the bad situations in order to produce those endorphins for yourself. It's, um, you know, it's really about perception. And uh, if you can maintain a positive perspective Perspective about everything, you know, and, and it isn't easy. I know there's a lot of circumstances out there that can happen that can bring us, you know, severe stress and make us feel like our lives are spinning out of control. And, you know, that's part of learning and it's part of life. I, I met somebody, uh, you know, in passing recently that told me they had a kidney transplant. And this person, you know, was saying how lucky they are. And, you know, they told me this story about how a relative actually stepped up to the plate without them knowing and contacted, uh, you know, their their medical team and asked if they could um, tr- donate a kidney and had themselves tested and everything and then gave that gift over the Christmas season. And I am just like in so 
I'm so shocked and in awe that this person was like, I have the best luck ever. <laughs> and and I thought, what a good perspective, because, you know, the fact that they were in, encountering this um, situation where they even needed a kidney, a lot of people might have jumped into a very stressful thought pattern about that and been so focused on the fact that their kidneys weren't working perfectly or, you know, why is life treating me this way or, or anything of, you know, that nature that would create more stress for themselves. They kind of dove into, wow, I am the luckiest person ever because, you know, I have um, somebody, a relative that just stepped out of the background and said, here, it's my kidney, you know, <laughs> which is phenomenal. I mean, I don't know many people that would would do that. And I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that, you know, are willing to. But, you know, it's like I, I don't we don't have conversations about this often. So I, I found it pretty amazing that this individual had this experience and just the focus was like, I am so lucky. And, you know, I had I had this experience. It was a beautiful thing, um, you know. Stress is very critical to how we operate during the day. If you're perceiving everything coming at you is difficult, and today is Monday. It was a manic Monday for me. I I feel like I'm still uh, recovering from the stress that I had today and trying to bring in the good endorphins. So I love coming on this show because it reminds me, too, of, of the perspective that's necessary in order to uh, switch my perception, you know, switch my viewpoint around so that I'm bringing in the proper endorphins and, you know, releasing all of the stress so I don't have built up cortisol and, you know, chronic stress coming on, uh, stressful thoughts. I'm just kind of going with the flow. Um, you know, feeling like, okay, it's, it's been a tough day, but I'm going to release it all. I'm going to have this great show. And I thought, gee, you know, I really need to talk about the impacts of stress and how to manage them. And I did a um, YouTube video recently too on it. Um, there's so many different techniques that I just don't even have time to address it in an hour. So I'm gonna, I want to do like a sequence of shows on that. Um, you know, all the different ways that you can manage stress. But I, like, I'd like to actually do some video type formats for those things that need, uh, you know, some some examples shown physically. And uh, so I'll let you guys know when that's going to take place. And, you know, another thing that I'm really passionate about is um, making sure not just that we have less stress, but that we're trying to look at issues in our world where we can bring less stress to others. And, you know, I recently disclosed that I'm doing this book situation where if I sell 500 copies by February uh, February 16th, I think is the date. I think it's the 16th. I have to have, or excuse me, it's the 17th, February 17th. If I have 500 copies of my book, which is the title is create your legacy with mindfulness. And if I have 500 copies sold by that date, February 17th, that are pre-sold, um, you get some bonuses. There's some different things in there, like some free coaching from me and, uh, my meditations are free. And then there's some other things that are available depending on how many books you buy. But I will share with you guys that if this happens, I will be pitched to 134 publishers, um, that are large publishing houses. And I, you know, I really, I really want to like make an effort to make this happen. And I'll tell you why it's not just for me to sell books. I mean, I'm really excited about some of the things I'm presenting in Create Your Legacy with Mindfulness. However, I'm more passionate about the effects of it on everyone and their surrounding people that they touch um, and then how that energy could spread from each one of us if we start in, at ourselves first with being mindful, with living a purposeful life. If we start there, the energy will trickle out into areas of children, grandchildren, their friends and family. And, you know, just everybody will be affected eventually, the more people that look at living a more purposeful, mindful existence. And one of the things that I want to work on, too, is um, hunger for children. And I was affected by that story. I've been sharing it in every show I'm doing uh, back in November 
first, there was a story published about a Yemen girl, seven years old. She uh, passed only hours after her picture was taken and posted in the New York Times um, in an article regarding starvation that's happening. 1.8 million children in Yemen alone are affected by starvation. Um, so with that being said, you know, I really felt passionate that I needed to do something knowing that this is going on, seeing the visual effects of this child suffering. And so I'm donating 50 percent of all the profits that I receive from this book to um, help world hunger for children to that cause. And, you know, I just I hope everybody listens in and and, uh, you know, makes an effort and, and, and helps me promote this book to get more uh, mass marketing on it. We've got to take a break. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. We're back, and I'm Leah Marie, your host for this hour on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with the Mind Health Coach Program. So before I went to break, I was talking about, you know, a few things. I was talking about stress, good and bad stress, and how it affects us, um, and what are some of the things we have to do, which one of the major things we have to do is put things into perspective, and always working on looking at the positive perspective. How can we gain a positive perspective in order to manage the stress in healthy ways? And so with that being said, you know, I want to talk about, um, you know, the effects of, of stress. Stress, I got some fun statistics here on it. Um, stress levels are on the rise. And um, the U.S. American Psychiatric Association sponsored a survey and 40% of the people reported feeling more anxious in 2018 than they did last year. And we're only, a, you know, a month into 2019. So I'm assuming that it's not much different. And they also noticed a trending in some states that, you know, there's more stress in some states than there are others. So I found that kind of interesting, too. And the criteria that they used um, to evaluate the stress was based on commute times, unemployment rates, uh, work hours, population density, home price to income ratio, and rates of uninsured residents. So the top 10 states with the most stress, uh, the, the, the one that really stood out the, the most was New Jersey. New Jersey is the top stressed state in the country. And, you know, there's nine more. I have them uh, listed out. I don't have that with me for this show, unfortunately. But 
uh, it was interesting to me because even though some of the states that were listed were coastal, and I thought, boy, you know, like I've got it so great, we're on the coast. And I, actually, Massachusetts, where I am, it was not one of them, um, not one of the top stress states. But there were other states that were along the coastline, like Florida. I was kind of shocked that Florida was on the list. Um, they have a very high stress level in Florida. That's uh, one of the top ranking states for stress. Um, and so when you, you look at the criteria, oh, Georgia is actually one of them. California is another. And, you know, sunshine is there. And, you know, you think vitamin D might cause you a little bit of stress and, and lack of vitamin D. But, you know, Florida and California are ranked as very stressful states to live in. With that being said, you know, um, even though we live in certain areas of the country, and I would think that these areas that are very cold and difficult and, you know, that have limited um, warmth and, and uh, sun exposure would be the ones that were experiencing more stress. But interestingly, interestingly enough, that isn't the case. So with that being said, I think that it's important to look at, okay, well, then if, if these are the factors and the criteria that they were looking at, uh, commute times, unemployment rates, all of those things, then how do we switch it around? How do we start looking at ways to manage those those aspects of life that's just, it's a reality. It's part of life. And if you have chronic stress, there's so many things that can happen. I mentioned disease, um, but, you know, weight gain can be a factor too. And a lot of times, you know, we're eating on the fly. I know I've done it myself. I have been um, someone that has been, you know, in recent years, I recovered covering from a surgery and then I had an illness last year. So there's different factors that made me less apt to exercise and be paying attention to the way I'm eating. And then you have the holidays. <laughs> so that doesn't help a lot of us. And, you know, I, I think that um, it's very important to understand when you're gaining weight in your abdomen, it's it's packing around your organs and that's called visceral fat. And, you know, it's it's tough to get rid of, number one. And it's also related to stress and cortisol production. And it's also very dangerous. It's very dangerous to your heart and your organs. So it's, an, it's critical in so many different ways to look at, okay, now I know I have a lot of stress. I know these things are stressing me out, but are they worth it? And what is the bigger lesson here and how do I work on uh, improving my perception so that I can uh, maintain a better perspective on how um, that I'm going to deal with this, this stuff that I know comes every day, like traffic, you're just not going to get away from it. And, you know, a lot of employers are now looking at um, models of working from home. You know, I... Um, I sometimes work from home and I know that a lot of people are getting a couple days here or there with this virtual uh, atmosphere that we have with the computer and Skype. It's kind of, you know, it's not really difficult. I have employees that work for me and a lot of times like on snow days or something like that, you know, it's so much easier to keep everybody working and focused uh, if you just say, okay, you know what, work from home. And I think that if that's something that you can do too with your type of work, you know, if it's something that you're having phone conversations with or doing work on the computer, it, it might be easier for you to, to work a couple days from home. So maybe seeking out um, a position like that or uh, talking to your employer about a couple days working from home. So that's something you can do too. What can you, what steps can you take to shift things for yourself um, to make things a little easier and better? And, you know, making sure that you understand in order to manage the stress and have a positive outlook, that there's some factors that need to be handled. Uh, like, for instance, exercise, you have to make time for yourself for exercise, for meditation, and for balance. You've got to kind of look at all aspects of yourself. Um, you know, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you have to kind of make sure that you're meeting each one of your sections of needs. And, you know, self care is really critical um, to ensure that you can manage your stress. And there's different things you can do for that. You know, uh, a lot of times we're, you know, I speak with a lot of caregivers, both family and, um, 
you know, people that are caring for others um, and in a professional standpoint, as well as caring for themselves. And, um, you know, it's important that everybody realize uh, that if you can't care for yourself correctly, how are you going to care for others? And that's that's something that, you know, I have to drive home sometimes to family caregivers. And I always share this statistic because it's pretty important for people that are caregivers to know. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there doing caregivers, caregiving roles in their families. And, uh, you know, with Alzheimer's, one in two people over 85 have Alzheimer's and one in five caregivers, family caregivers, pass before the person with Alzheimer's passes. And that's pretty, that's pretty straightforward statistics from the Alzheimer's Association. And so that's pretty imperative to say, wow, I am a caregiver. I need to look at that and really take care of myself. Because how are you going to take care of anybody if you're in that state of, you know, you're declining? And that's kind of what happens. People tend to look at caring for everybody else and they don't take care of themselves. So it's important that we make that space and time for ourselves, making sure that we're not looking at it as, you know, sending like having the energy of guilt or sadness or like I can't do this failure. That's not it at all. It's our human need to be able to take care of ourselves and and allow the space. We're going to take another break and we'll be right back. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolly Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it welcome back to the mind health coach program with leah marie on bbm global network and tune in radio Uh, you can visit my website to learn more about my programs mindhealthcoach.com i am offering a 20 minute Uh, complimentary exploration call for my coaching services and I work with executives and uh, you know individuals that are looking to manage their stress so tonight that's what we're talking about my favorite topic is how to manage your stress Uh, there's so many ways to do that and you know I'm really interested in learning more about um Ayurveda and self-care. I'm actually going through a program with the Deepak Chopra uh, Center out in California, and I'm going to learn about every aspect of his perfect health program, and I'm really excited about that. It, it's intriguing to me, these ancient practices. I have been utilizing some of them for quite a while in my CEU programs that I do in the medical field. 
um, because I do have access to some heavy duty information on it already with um, some experts that are in my company. And I really, um, you know, I find it fascinating. And I, I think it's important that we look at it as an aspect of what we do every day, the daily routines. It, it, it talks about keeping your senses clear. Like, you know, we, as we age, things are sort of compromised if we're not taking care of some of our, you know, physical being. And Ayurveda really hones in on that and helps us. I almost say, you know, when I do my presentations in the medical field, that these things that we talk about with the daily routine with Ayurveda, such as uh, cleansing your nasal passages or oil pulling for your teeth and, you know, just giving yourself a massage with some coconut oil with, uh, you know, maybe some essential oil mixed in like lavender just to relax yourself. All of that is it's caring for yourself on a physical level that's, you know, deeper. And, you know, sometimes like I find myself getting caught up that I'm so busy that I'll just like, I'll whip through my daily routine of the, the, the minimum that I can do, you know, uh, maybe I'll definitely brush my teeth, but it won't be as long as I need or, (laughs) or it'll be like, you know, I, I brushed my hair and I, you know, threw on my clothes and I ran out the door. I, I did all I could as fast as I could. So I wasn't really appreciating the time for myself. It's like always high speed mo- mode. And when you're always living in that high speed, fast paced lifestyle, it, it creates stress. And some of it, as I said, could be good. But most of the times, if we're not getting enough rest, if we're not taking care of ourselves in this loving, nurturing way, it does start to show up. And it starts to show up in, you know, maybe choosing poor foods that we're eating because we're on the run. I know that's been one of my big problems. And I really am in love with um, these new programs you can get on for healthy eating, like uh, fresh foods that you can uh, pick a meal plan and pick out exactly what you want to order. And they'll send you all the ingredients and it's pretty much measured out and it's easy recipes that can be done. I mean, that is a way to manage some of this stuff that um, instead of picking up takeout and, you know, going to the grocery store and getting the prepared foods, some of those foods are very high in salt. Um, You know, there's a lot of aspects that they're processed uh, or buttery and rich and, you know, they're great once in a while, but it's not a good healthy routine to be in to always be getting takeout or, you know, foods that are prepared from different places. Um, You know, the grocery store, I've noticed, I've tried, I've tried to eat healthy from those prepared foods at the grocery store, and I'm just not finding, you know, that I have comfort in the facts that are they being mindful about GMOs? Are they being mindful about making sure organic ingredients are used? Are they using the best quality ingredients? And so when I choose the meal plans from, I, I like Sun, Sun Basket in particular, I think they're phenomenal. I can choose paleo, Mediterranean, you know, so there's different things you can do. Basically, the whole point of that is to simplify and make your life uh, be easier and healthier while you're on the fly. But we have to be mindful about it. We have to make the right choices and, you know, picking up uh, you know, some fast food on the way home, it's not, it's not going to help you in the long run to keep living that lifestyle. And you're going to start accumulating, like I said, the, the visceral fat that, that comes on in the midsection and, uh, you know, packs around your organs and that's not healthy. So, you know, sometimes it takes some reframing work in order to start achieving those goals of lowering stress, healthier living. And, you know, working on your meditation is really key for weight loss, too. So I actually have written a meditation. And I wanted to do that tonight with you guys, um, probably in the second to the last segment, my last segments really short. So let's see, it will be in the um, session when we come back uh, around 639, 640, uh, or 642 is when that session will be when I do the meditation. So 642 to 650 is when I'll be talking and doing the meditation. So during that little time span, if you want to 
you know, get quiet and find a place to meditate. I know it's 629 now. And, you know, I'm just trying to let everybody know ahead of time so that you can prepare and be ready. A couple things you want to do. Um, just make sure you're going into a space uh, where you're able to just tune into my voice and just get quiet and breathe and then go with the flow of the guided meditation that I'll be providing to you. And hopefully, you know, you'll be able to actually get into the alpha brainwave state and I'll plant some seeds to get you going in the right direction for um, meditation for weight loss. And uh, when also when we come back, I'm going to address a couple other techniques that I am uh, thinking might be helpful for you to get on your focus of releasing stress. Um, So we'll we'll be right back. We're going to take another break. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. We're back live on the Mind Health Coach Program with Leah Marie. I'm your host, and you're listening to uh, BBM Global Network. And tonight we're talking about stress management and working on, um, you know, releasing stress, focusing on the thought patterns that help you develop more self-care, because I think we are programmed so much to you know, give, give, give. (laughs) And sometimes we need to focus on giving to ourselves. It's a really critical thing to focus on giving to ourselves. And so that's mainly, you know, what stress management is about. It's like, you know, when we give to ourselves and we can see the lessons in different scenarios, we can actually become grateful. So it's, it's the energy of giving and it's giving to yourselves and, you know, you can allow yourselves to have great gratitude. As I mentioned in one of the segments before we were kind of, you know, sometimes we're, we're, we feel guilty for taking that time for ourselves. However, if you don't, there's consequences. So it's important that you look at that. And, you know, so there's different things you can do along with um, doing some self-care, meaning making time for yourself to really be mindful during eating, eating foods that are healthy for you, choosing foods that, you know, it's very, it's very important to look at the labels today. It's important to understand because, you know, everybody has every every processed food is trying to promote that their food is still healthy, you know, and it's, it's all great for them, but for, for the consumer level, it is kind of a scary scenario. So you got to really understand your labels and you got to know, um, you know, what you're putting into yourself is it can impact your health. Um, so it's important to look GMO free organic, you know, I'm choosing all of those things now and I feel so much better. And I also noticed that, 
I'm not so bloated and bulky and, you know, gluten-free is really important too. Um, sugar, eliminating sugar. I, I also have been using organic stevia lately and I find that to be a great replacement for some things that I enjoy with some sweetness. Although I do notice myself and I've read this and I've, you know, heard this from medical professionals that once you start to eliminate sugar from your diet, you kind of, you know, I, I've had this happen in the past where you don't have sugar for about, you know, six, seven days and your palate changes. And any time you do eat sugar, it's like, whoa, that's way too much sugar, even if it's just a little bit of sweetness to something. So I think it's important to kind of look at that and eliminate the sugar from your diet um, for a few days and allow your body to cleanse out that interaction that we have with sugar. Um, you know, it can be almost addictive at times, and, and that's a that's a very harmful uh, substance. They say that our DNA doesn't even know how to interact with processed sugar and high fructose high fructose corn syrup. It's like it's it's unknown how our DNA you know it doesn't know what to do with it. So that's why it kind of creates a lot of health issues for us. Um, you know, I want to also talk about uh, the the daily practices where you're cleansing the senses. You're, there's different things you can use, like a, a neti pot for your for your nasal passages is helpful. You can spray some rose water on your eyes, um, cleansing your ears. Uh, it's as simple as like just keeping them moisturized with some uh, sesame oil especially in the winter months. And um, you want to do some oil pulling. You can use sesame oil. You can use coconut oil. There's different oil substances that you can use that are, you know, you can you can get from a health food store or online. There's a great, a, a great amount of stuff online, and you can do research and make sure they're all working well for you. And then essential oils are wonderful accents to the self-care daily routine. And that would be like if you're having trouble relaxing, lavender is really helpful. Um, to have for, you know, if you're feeling stressed, you you can't ever relax, you, you need to have some way to help yourself. There's um, lavender oil. There's also some great blends that are out there for balancing emotional wellness. I have some of them on my website if you go in through a portal. I, I don't promote doTERRA as, um, you know, signing up reps or anything like that. I just, I'm not into the business model of network marketing, and but I love the oil. I love the products. I think they're amazing and they're so helpful that I kind of want to still be able to give access to that resource. So I have it on my website. You can peek around on my portal and see, you know, what you're thinking. There's the emotional oil lineup that I have a picture of on my website, mindhealthcoach.com. And they're blends, they're oil blends. And one thing I really love about doTERRA is that they actually um, make sure that everything is pesticide free and, you know, it's sourced from the best resources. And they, they have a good, good humanitarian effort uh, and philanthropy initiative that they work towards, too. So I, I like that aspect of doTERRA oils. So you can actually look at, at the portal, like I said, that's available through my website check things out and you can always email me an order. I can place it for you and ship it. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Or you can book a consult with me if you would like some more information about what oils might ha help whatever situation that you're needing some help with. So um, the essential oils are really great. Uh, I think especially like I mentioned Doing a massage for yourself or say if you're a caregiver for somebody that you're caring for with dementia, it can help both of you at the same time. If you're having somebody that you are caregiving for and they are stressed out and they're, you know, having a lot of agitation, one of the best things to do is to actually mix some essential oil, a couple drops, as long as no one is allergic of, um, you know, either lavender oil or orange oil. And there's many other fun oils to deal with, too, um, that are safe for the skin. In, but it's good to get a consult on that and mix it with some some uh, fractionated coconut oil and then you can apply it to their hands and just kind of calm them down by giving them a little hand massage and at the same, same time both of you are inhaling the fragrance that's coming it's not even really a fragrance it's 
it, they're actually molecules that come out of the essential oil, and they're called sesquiterpenes. <laughs> You'll probably never hear, hear that word again, but these sesquiterpenes are important because they pass through. It's been scientifically proven that they just pass through the blood-brain barrier, and they go right to your brain in certain areas. So there's different um there's different essential oils that activate different parts of the brain. So lavender will activate the, the part of your brain that helps you with relaxation. And orange essential oil will help you with rejuvenation and also calming you if you have anxiety. And as I mentioned, there's many different types of oils that can help. So as I said, book a consult if you're interested in learning more. But that's one way to really help both yourself and that person that you're caring for, uh, you know, even if it's a, a child and you want to calm them down and they're not allergic to lavender, then that's a wonderful way to do it is just kind of giving them a little bit of essential oil on their hands and allowing both of you to experience the molecules that will bring you uh, relaxation or revitalization, revitalizing you from orange oil. Uh, so the, there, there's a bunch more things that we can talk about. I'll be right back. We're going to take another quick break. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. We're back on the Mind Health Coach program with Leah Marie on the BBM Global Network and iHeartRadio. Visit my website at mindhealthcoach.com to learn more about my programs. And also just want to mention, you know, I'm hoping that everyone will take a look at the opportunity to pre-purchase my book, Create Your Legacy with Mindfulness, and help me achieve reaching a a bunch of different publishers that will help me mass market this book. And my initiatives for this are not only to, you know, write a great book, have you guys buy it and learn about creating your own legacy with mindfulness, but also to help a population of um, children that are really starving. And my attention was brought to this issue from an article, as I mentioned, in the New York Times. Please visit my website. You can go to the page that says the mindfulness book, Create Your Life with Le- uh, Create Your Legacy with Mindfulness, and you can learn more about that opportunity where I'm going to be donating whatever profits I make. Um, half of those profits will be going to the cause of helping children that are uh, facing starvation. So a pretty serious topic, but, you know, I want to also say that it's just really important that we all, you know, take ownership in how we're treating our children in the world and that it's not about 
boundaries. Uh, it's not about, um, you know, pol political agendas. It's not about, um, you know, anything to do with any of that. We have children that are in dire straits right now, living very painfully and suffering. And I think all of us need to take a look at that no matter where you are. With that being said, I know that a lot of us are um, dealing with our own relationship with food. And, uh, you know, some of us are blessed. And I am so fortunate. I have such an abundance of food. And I, it, you know, I don't want to go into the energy of guilt because I know that, you know, it's just part of the culture that I live in that we have easy water that's accessible to us and food and it's we're just so fortunate and I'm very very grateful for that because there's so many areas of the world that do not have clean water and they do not have food like we do and so you know with that being said um, our relationship with food we need to kind of settle that we need to kind of focus on what is the food really for and you know be mindful and also be resourceful with it um, and also also really focus on you know why we do eat and make sure that it's for the best of our overall well-being of, of why we're eating. So that's part of this show is stress management because that can bring on a lot of weight and also cause you some unhealthy eating habits along with um, – using some mindfulness techniques to rid yourself of stress and then eventually get yourself in a flow of healthy behaviors that have you make better choices for food, releasing the stress, uh, using these tools that I kind of talked about tonight. I didn't even get to pranayamic breathing. Pranayama breathing is just, uh, that breath work is amazing. But I do want to do a meditation with you guys. It's one that I wrote re recently, and I'd mentioned uh, the segment before that we were going to do a meditation. So hopefully you've found a space where you can join me in meditation. And I always uh, say, you know, just settle down whichever way you're comfortable. Find a place where you can settle your mind away from noise and distractions. And hopefully you can stick some headphones on quick and, uh, you know, just start focusing on your breath. And you're, you're going to just take a nice deep breath in and allow yourself to breathe in through your nose on the count of five. And you, you breathe in one, two, three, four, five, and hold it. And then hold it within and slowly exhale, two, three, four, five, six. And take a few deep breaths in this way with the ratio of five in through the nose and holding it for a couple beats. And then slowly exhaling. So you're going to do that one, two, three, four, five, and hold it. And slowly exhale, two, three, four, five. You're in the body that you've always known existed underneath all the layers that are still feeding you. And you, you're expressing your physical body in the most advantageous ways in your journey. I want you to focus on that part of you where you feel healthy, energetic, and vibrant. And you're going to you're going to visualize yourself in that ultimate best shape. And it can be at any age. You can figure out, you know, whatever that means to you, what the ultimate best shape, the best form or ever, form ever. Just you're expressing, you're expressing your physical body in that way here on earth to achieve a long and vibrant life filled with activity, healthy foods, and feeling amazing. You feel confident in your skin and you're projecting that self-esteem and confidence as you engage with the physical world. Our physical bodies are something to be extremely grateful for. It is the vehicle in which we achieve most of our activities here on earth. It is the way for us to ultimately experience the world on a sensory level. It is powerfully sensual and brings us immense pleasure and pain. The body is our greatest teacher for our soul's journey in this life. In order to live longer, life with more energy and quality, it is important for us to focus on the state of the body. 
There may be times in your life that your body has experienced sickness or stress, bringing your physical being into a state of those occurrences, and that is okay. We can accept where we have been and know that in our hearts, what is reflecting in our challenges is something for us to overcome. It is our path. It is important to see what those lessons are, accept the gifts, and it is our responsibility to transform. Transformation is what we can do to focus on receiving our lessons, being in a state of gratitude, bringing awareness to those areas where we know the ultimate transformation is possible, stepping into the space of love and self-care to achieve the best we can be. At this time, I would like you to imagine yourself in front of a mirror, recognizing the beautiful soul that is reflected back to you when you're looking deep into your own eyes. Take this moment to send love, compassion, and healing to yourself in this moment. Spend time feeling your heart fill with the pink light of divine love and allow it to fill up your being completely. Next, I want you to imagine that your crown chakra on top of your head opens to a powerful divine healing white light that emanates down and flows into your body and mixes in with the divine pink love that is present within you at this time. As this mixture of white and pink love blend together into a beautiful shade of glittering pale pink light, imagine sending the light from your heart chakra out to the image of you in the mirror. Send that light right through your heart chakra, right to the the heart chakra that's reflecting to you in the mirror and connect as this flow of perfect love and healing enters that image of you focus in any areas you'd like to see release the weight that no longer serves your physical being as you shine your powerful light to these areas you will see melting of those parts that transmute into the energy of gratitude And so with that, I want you to focus on loving those parts of yourself and releasing and melting away and visualize the healthiest, best you that you can and take this image with you and and visualize on it every day for at least five minutes per day in your meditation time. If you're if you're looking to work on your physical being and uh, work on using meditation as part of your application to lose weight. And with that being said, we're going to wrap up this meditation and we're going to take a quick break and you can join me when we come right back for our last segment of the show. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. I'm Leah Marie, your host for this hour on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with the Mind Health Coach Program. And before we went to break, I did a quick meditation on, uh, you know, focusing on you, blessing and thanking yourself. It was a, you know, transformation for yourself in a mirror, like you can actually close your eyes and visualize yourself in front of a mirror doing this exercise, or you can actually do it in the mirror looking at yourself. Um, But I actually going to professionally record that um, meditation for weight loss, uh, meditation, and I'll be offering that soon. I hope you enjoyed the record that the actual meditation that we did here. 
hear. Um, but yes, it will be recorded eventually. Um, also discussed tonight, I, I want to remind everybody, take a look at my website, mindhealthcoach.com. I, you know, I ask you to really consider um, taking a serious look at uh, purchasing my book, Create Your Legacy with Mindfulness. And uh, more than just buying my book, but also helping me help a big population of our world that are suffering right now. And I really like I feel like so passionate about helping this cause. There's um, a lot of children that are that are dying of starvation right now. They don't have clean water. They don't have food. And it really brought home, you know, you hear about these stories. But when you see a picture like Amal Hussein, who I am, de- I'm dedicating the book to, even though I have no idea, I've never met her or her family. I felt so compassionate and just, you know, I was so moved by the story that, uh, talked about these Yemen children, 1.8 million of them that are facing the same type of passing that little Amal Hussein faced in November, um, seven years old. And I just, I feel like I need to do something. So 50% of all profits will go to the sale of this book. I'm trying to um, win this uh, opportunity to be pitched to 134 publishers. My website's mindhealthcoach.com. Please help me, you know, to um, help this effort. If I had... I had the money, I would just give it over, but I'm trying to generate it and help others by, you know, sharing knowledge about purposeful living. That's what the book's about, um, creating a more purposeful life and existence. And, uh, you know, a lot of that has to do with how our perception is of um, our circumstances, our own circumstances. And we can find purpose in every moment and we can actually experience a building of purpose and legacy in every moment, because the more that we achieve purposeful living, we actually have a a more of a a greater positive impact on those around us. And eventually it spreads out to the rest of the world. So, uh, you know, it's really important for all of us. We have a responsibility to the future of our planet and evolution, um, you know, to really do that. So, With that being said, I'm really, you know, imploring that you take a look at mindhealthcoach.com. My mindfulness book is uh, listed there. You can learn a lot more. Uh, There's a link as well to being able to public to be able to purchase it as well. So um, with that being said, everybody have a wonderful week and I will talk to you on the Mind Health Coach show next week, next Monday night at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. You've been listening to The Mind Health Coach with your host, Leah Marie. Tune in each week so you can experience contentment and a feeling of well-being on all levels of existence, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual on The Mind Health Coach Show with your host, Leah Marie. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.